I actually came from a very strange food disordered pattern myself growing up since I was like 11 or 12. I think I had what you would probably describe as an eating disorder throughout that really till I discovered carnivore. It was just different styles of having struggles, never really understanding why. It was sort of funny that I came across carnivore because my friend sort of just tried it for a month. I was open to trying it. This was uh, a little while ago. I was like, okay, what the heck? Let's try it. Just had meat. And from that, I realized like I was always full. I felt like I could just eat whenever I wanted to, which was a new freedom for people that have had a history of eating disorders. Okay. Good morning. Welcome. Hope everybody can hear. We have Lauren here today. It's good to have you. Where are you located? I'm actually um, in Denver, Colorado, though I do live in Austin. I'm kind of back home right now for the holidays nice. um, and some stuff, you know, that I have to take care of. Got it. Okay. Well, is it, how's the weather there? We got a bunch of snow where I'm at. Oh, it's looking freezing as usual. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So I hate it. Where are you, where are you calling out of actually? I'm in Washington state right now. So I'm, I'm in a little town called Snohomish, which is about uh, 20 miles sort of. North I've East. actually never been there. I've hear, heard really good things though. Of Washington? Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty state. It's a real pretty state. Yeah, it's nice. I definitely like it so far. Um, Although I miss living in the South where the weather was warm in the winter sometimes, but otherwise it's, it's, it's nice. So, well, let's get started here. So why don't you just kind of just tell us a little bit about, about who you are and what's going on. And I guess you've got a success story you want to share with us. So let's, let's get started with that. Um, yeah. Wanted to share a little bit about my situation um, kind of like everything that's been going on with carnivore. What uh, what questions did you have for me or do you want me to just hop into it? Well, I mean, I guess, I mean, there's a reason you you chose a diet, I suppose. Most people do it because they're, they're trying to fix their health. So maybe you can describe what was going on or, you know, what your pattern had been prior to this and, and how things were going and, and what you wanted, sure. why you needed to change things. Yeah. So I actually came from a very strange uh, food disordered pattern myself growing up since I was like 11 or 12. I think I had what you would probably describe as an eating disorder throughout that period of time until really till I discovered carnivore. It was just different styles of having struggles, you know, feeling, feeling um, satisfied with food, never really understanding why. It was sort of funny that I came across carnivore because my friend sort of just tried it for a month. They just heard about it, I think through online and I was open to trying it. This was uh, a little while ago. So I just did it for a month. I was like, okay, what the heck, let's try it. And just had meat, just completely carnivore, not animal-based or anything like that, which I know is another thing. But, and from that, I realized like I was always full. Um, I always felt full. I felt like I could just eat whenever I wanted to, which was a new freedom for people that have had a history of eating disorders, or even just like hearing the classic lose weight stuff or stay fit stuff. Like you're just kind of taught to restrict your food a little bit. And so having just the ability to eat whatever I wanted, kind of when I wanted was huge and having access to just not needing to count calories was massive. So I basically spent that month experiencing what it felt like to just have a normal <laughs> relationship to food. And I ended up eating as much as I wanted all the time. And as a result, I felt great, looked great. My skin was great. I lost 10 pounds in that month um, without any effort and basically have been doing it ever since. Well, what you, you'd mentioned, you know, a history of kind of disordered eating. I mean, was it, was it like anorexic type thing, bulimic type things, or was it just, I don't know what, what kind of diet or did you try the plant-based strategy? Everybody seems to like to do that. Did you do any of those things? It was, it was anorexia, it was bulimia. It was also just restrictive, I guess you could say. So there were stages, right? So at one point I was a hundred pounds at five, eight, when I was going into college, ended up dropping out of college. I'm now 145. So I was about 50 pounds, 45 pounds lighter than I am today. And I'm pretty lean today. So that was my biggest stage of anorexia going into, you know, another part of my later years. I think it was bulimia for like a year. Um, but then it was just kind of always having a weird relationship to food. It's, there wasn't really a title you can put to it. It was just not normal. You could it just constantly on my mind, constantly trying to make sure I was watching what I was eating, how much of it, counting calories, just obsessive thinking. Yeah. I mean, and it's interesting because when we, it, it's, I think a lot of people, when we try to adapt to a diet that humans are not adapted to, and this is this modern diet, I would argue that this, this is not our natural diet and, and trying to figure out how to r remain healthy or sane or at a 
you know, reasonable body composition is a very challenge. And so you have to sort of, many people have to do these sort of different, difficult things. Like what kind of foods, I mean, you said you restricted things or you felt bad about, how did that work? What kind of things would you avoid or how would you deal with it? Let's say you, I mean, if you ate something you weren't supposed to, did you get guilt racked or what was going on with that? It's funny when you have a eating disorder, you tend to go, you eat less, but you kind of have more sugar. I would say because it's fast, it gives you quick energy. So it would be more things that were like candy, you know, here and there, like every couple hours have like one candy. Right. And it's not like you're thinking actively that you're doing that. It's just kind of what you become having like some cheese sticks, you know, or like whatever you'd have your morning. Right. It seems really pretty normal, like bacon and eggs, right. It's pretty normal, but then you spend the next eight hours not eating. And if you feel like you want to eat, you pop candy, maybe. Um, or have a diet so or something like that. And it gives you that quick, fast boost of energy and makes you feel full and kind of tricks your mind um, into thinking that it's getting something. And then, you know, have a f- some fruit, that's good sugar. But the thing was, it was never a conversation to have protein. That was what was so interesting about this is like, it was always the conversation to your point in your videos. A lot, it's like salads, you know, particularly women are taught a lot of the time to have salads, just things that like a bit, you know, veggies, that kind of stuff versus just have a a steak (laughs) and enjoy the steak, you know? And in my mind that I was lifting weights too. So in my mind, it was all wrong. I was like, oh, if I have a lot of protein though, and I'm lifting five days a week, six days a week, I'm going to get really bulky, which takes a lot more effort than we think it will. But that was more what I was going toward was just kind of the quick sugars without realizing it one big meal a day, and then maybe supplementing with some cheese or some fruit here and there throughout the day. You know, I mean, most people say cheese, fruit's not that bad, you know, overall. I mean, for most people, um, let me, let me ask you, did you have any, like outside of this, this sort of disordered eating behavior that you, that you describe, were there any other health issues, I mean, skin, cognitive, mental capacity, cognition, mood, anything going on joint pain or any, anything like that that was going on? Totally. Yeah. I didn't have joint pain. I'm kind of one of those people where I can I can eat pretty much what I want and feel okay. Well, you know, there's some people that really, really, really suffer. Like they can't actually function. So I sort of like functioned at a pretty steady baseline of just feeling all right. When I started eating carnivore, my mood shot up. I needed fewer hours of sleep. So I would wake up at like six in the morning without an alarm after going to bed at like midnight and feel great. Whereas before I was groggy, we'd wake up super groggy Um, When I was anorexic going into college, I ended up dropping out of college because my mood was so all over the place. My anxiety was always at a 10. It was like fight or flight all the time. And I couldn't sleep at all. And that was years ago, right? So it's been, it's kind of like, that was a very serious stage Uh, up until the recent years. It wasn't quite like that, right? But that said, up until the recent years before carnivore, mood was still fluctuating up and down a little bit. I've always had eczema. So in rosacea on my skin, um, rosacea particularly would be just like cheeks and stuff. Right. And that completely went away doing just one month. My skin I noticed was really to, for lack of a better word, just radiant and that's on my face. And then also just all over body, right. Everywhere, legs, arms just cleared up from carnivore. And then, like I said, the mood was good. The sleep was good. So had a lot of positive changes. Luckily, I didn't have any joint pain or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, and, and you look, I mean, looking at you, look like your skin you looks healthy. You look healthy. You look radiant. You look like your skin looks nice. All the hair and everything looks pretty good to me from what I can tell on a video. But I'm, I'm just wondering, um, you know, cause a lot of people say, well, why, why didn't you just like go with a balanced diet and eat like, you know, normal food, balanced fruit, vegetables, you know, whole grains, did you ever try that? Did it not work for you? What was uh, what was the reason for it? Because a lot of people say, well, carnivores are restrictive and extreme. Why would you have to go to that extreme? Why did, those, did you try those other things that just not work for you? Yeah. So the funny thing, and this is what I sort of talk about a lot myself uh, in trying to tell people about carnivores, like if you're, if you have a disordered eating pattern, you're probably used to being restrictive anyways. So the thought of doing animal, like if you see other people succeeding with carnivore, it really doesn't seem to me, at least it didn't seem like it was so hard because I was already restricting too much or had a lifestyle of doing that. So to answer your question, I had tried a bunch of those different things all over the years. You just, when you have disordered eating patterns and it's just part of your life. And now I can say this objectively looking back, like it's just part of your life. So I had tried 
not vegan. Um, I didn't try that, but just more veggies, um, more fruit. I never felt full. I never felt full on anything. So it was just always annoying, you know, cause you're still supplementing with things like you're still calorie counting. You're still trying to feel full with just eating veggies and fruit and those either other solutions. So I, I probably tried all of them, honestly, except for vegan. I didn't really ever try vegan. Um, it just didn't appeal to me and I didn't think it sounded very healthy in, in my opinion. That's just what I didn't think or what I thought at the time. So yeah, I went through all of them and then saw the carnivore because it looked like it was working for my friend and it didn't seem all that restrictive because my lifestyle <laughs> with food was restrictive anyways. So I was like, oh, sure, let's give this one a shot. I mean, I don't know. I assume you have friends and family and relationships around you. I mean, what is a general, I mean, are you perceived as this is just nutty, crazy stuff or are you getting some support here? Or what's going on with that? So I help a lot of people in my own right doing this. So I sort of have a little bit of a surrounding of people in that way. Um, so there's one or two people close to me outside of that, that I, that are living a similar lifestyle outside of that completely. Yeah. You know, you're perceived as weird, strange, extreme to me. That's not something that's completely new. I stopped drinking alcohol when I was like 25 or 26, which at the time was a pretty weird thing to do. That was about five years ago too. And that wasn't really a very common conversation. So I'm familiar with that space. Now it's more, you know, you don't drink and you're carnivore, right? So it, it comes off to, I think people, they think that's like, whoa, she must have like an eating disorder big time or something, right? <laughs> when in reality, it's actually the complete opposite. I've noticed that if you try to explain it to people, it's become more common, a little bit more here and there, but people have to be in a place to want to hear it, to explain it to them. Otherwise it just completely goes over. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, also the alcohol thing is so common for somebody to mm. do that. And we've accepted it as, as kind of normal, but it's, you know, I mean, particularly drinking alcohol to excess is a, is a real problem. And uh, I think eating garbage food all the time, this is much of a problem. It's not worse. It's probably more insidious. We have more people that, that are doing that. And so when you're like, I'm going to be, I'm going to focus on high value, high nutrient, you know, nutritious food rather than this, this processed cheap garbage that most of us eat. It, it can be, I don't know, I guess it's threatening. People don't like it when they're, when there is kind of shows, holds up the mirror to them. So I'm, I'm eating this way. Cause you know, people think, well, do you think you're better than me or something like that? I don't know. It's kind of funny. What's that? Right. Um, you're in Austin, Texas. You said, I mean, that's, that's gotta be a good place to be carnivore. I mean, I've been there many times. I went to college there at UT and I know there's some great barbecue. So how hard is it being carnivore in, in the capital of Texas? I would say Texas is probably one of the best places to do it. People are way more open about it there. So it's an interesting thing I, I have found from moving to Austin. It's a pretty progressive place in terms of just health and coaching and that sort of stuff. Being from Denver, it's I would say the contrast is pretty clear. Far more people in Austin are open to it and aware. Like when you say I'm going carnivore, I'm doing carnivore. Like, oh, same, me too. Or you know, good for you, whatever. Whereas in Denver, it's like, what is that? Or like, dude, that's so unhealthy. I've heard like, that's you, that's horrible. Can't, meat's going to give you cancer. Have you heard the studies? Like <laughs> very different environments. So very easy in Austin relative to other places to go carnivore for sure. Yeah. And it, it is interesting, you know, when you see, uh, well, I mean, it is becoming more and more people have heard of this. You know, when I, when I wrote this book, the carnivore diet, you know, several years ago, it was new. And, and I mean, there were a few people that knew about it, but it was largely unknown. And, and now many people that, that follow nutrition at least have heard of it. Most of them, oftentimes in a negative light, because that's how it's portrayed. But as we see more and more people getting healthier and healthier, you know, you, it's, it's, it becomes hard to deny when we, when we do that. So you you said you started out pretty strict carnivore. How long ago, how long have you been doing it for? And, and where are you at now? What is it? What does your day-to-day -day diet look like these days? Or what did it start as? Probably like eight, nine months now. It's been interesting. I actually was going to ask you your opinion of a couple of things if you if that was an option to do, but shifting more to, well, back and forth between carnivore and animal base, mainly just because sometimes I just want some sweet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's just kind of a, not something that I've been testing to see what that's like for me, but started out very much strong carnivore, uh, went a little bit more toward animal based now back towards strong carnivore. That's really where it's at right now, but playing around a little bit, um, no, you know, vegetables or anything like that still. 
So uh, no grains. I don't drink, I don't really have dairy. I rarely have cheese. So it would probably be more just meat and fruit. Well, I mean, you know, as far as my opinion, I, I just tell people do what works for them. I mean, there's no reason you shouldn't experiment, see what works for you. Some people are able to incorporate other foods, including fruit and things like that back in and they do fine. Other people, it, it, it doesn't work for them. They, they try it for, I've seen a lot of people now because there's you know, certainly people talking about, you know, eating fruit and all this stuff and honey and maple syrup and, you know, whatever. I see a lot of people that do that, that end up sort of figuring out that that didn't really work for them well, but some people it works for them. So you just have to see what, see what happens with you. You know, you said you'd been lifting weights all, all this time and you felt that, you know, the, the protein would make you too bulky, which I, I wish that were the case. Cause I've been training 40 some years and still trying to put on muscle. It's hard. <laughs> it really is hard. What, what's happened with your performance? Like as, as, as an athlete, as someone who's exercising, have you noticed that's gotten better for you or what, what's the deal with that? So I also run long distance. Sometimes I'll do like trail running. So I noticed in the beginning, we'll talk about that first and then weightlifting with the trail running in the beginning, when I was shifting to carnivore, I think running outside in the sun, sweating, doing 10, 12 miles mm -hmm. is really hard on you with the electrolyte thing. So you really, in the beginning, when you're transitioning from my experience, have to add a lot of electrolytes before and after maybe during your run, because you're just shedding all of that as you're going, it's my, you know, I felt pretty sick, but then over time I adapted. So I was able to run distance, be totally fine and feel normal. As far as weightlifting, um, I actually felt just as sharp as before. And I looked better. So that was encouraging, <laughs> uh, you know, when you're lifting and you see that you can actually see your muscles protruding because you're lower body fat, at least for me, um, that was really the only change was just the way I looked, but I felt sharper and better and i wouldn't say more energy i just didn't see that the energy decreased yeah so better body composition equal performance on and on mm -hmm. what um as far as you know you said you had this i guess history of restrictive eating or, or eating disorder where you probably have sort of kind of just feel i don't know maybe you feel wrong about doing something and you feel like you're you're, you're guilty or something Do, has that gone away now completely with with this diet now I would say, yeah, actually, I would say so. I mean, it's almost like it's worked in my favor in a way. I'm a bit restrictive in history, like I can turn it now into a positive. I don't really crave anything else when I'm eating carnivore. So I don't feel this need to be restrictive. And if one looks at eating carnivore as restrictive, I mean, I don't know. I feel full and happy and satiated throughout the day. So that's enough for me. Yeah. I mean, I look at it this way. I mean, a lot of people are restricting nutritious food. They feel guilty about it. Like, oh my God, I can only eat, you know, I better have a small steak, not a big one. And they're always restricting that because they're worried about it. My, I, I think it's the opposite. Now you just eat as much as you want. And, and that's, you know, when you realize that that is a significant part of what makes up human beings is, is, is this, at least historically it was. And I think it, it makes it a lot easier. Do you cook at home mostly? Do you got to eat or what's, what's your, I mean, I, I don't, I, I find it like, I, I don't like to go out to eat that much because it just costs too, it's just too expensive to eat what I want to eat as far as, you know, if I'm going to eat three pounds of steak at a restaurant, I'm going to walk out of there with a $300 bill or something like that. So what do you do? Do you cook a lot? Yeah, I cook. Um, that's my main thing. So I order meat in bulk. I avoid restaurants. Not I don't avoid them. I shouldn't say that. I prefer to eat what I'm cooking because I like it and it's cheap. <laughs> so I'll have beef mainly, bacon, eggs, some steak here and there, liver sometimes, that sort of stuff. I have recently learned more about seed oils. Um, be curious about your input on that if you had any, but notice a lot of restaurants cook with canola oil, you know, that's vegetable oils. And that's something that I'm trying to avoid. Um, so for me, eating bacon, eggs, and beef pretty much daily has kind of been my go-to. I'm not sure what your take is on that nutrient wise. Is, is that enough in your opinion? And also like, do you think the seed oils thing is worth avoiding? Well, I mean, the seed oil, seed oil, the seed oil topic is very controversial. I mean, you know, certainly if you avoid that, if you, if you make an effort to avoid seed oils, you're largely going to exclude all the processed foods out of your diet because it's late, literally in everything. And so the question is, is it, is it actually the seed oil itself? Is it the fact that it's usually associated with processed food and a marker for processed food consumption? I don't know for sure. I mean, I think there's people that obviously are very, very down on that. And I think in general, 
you know, if you're going to avoid seed oils, you're going to avoid most processed food. Now, if, if somebody cooks your steak in canola oil, is that significantly damaging you? I don't know. I don't know that that's, I don't usually worry about when I go to a restaurant. I'm, I don't go, I don't go that often. So it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's so limited that does it make it a big deal. Now, if you're eating every single night in a restaurant, you know, perhaps, perhaps that would add up or if it is a problem. And again, I think it's still controversial. I know there's a lot of people that are just, absolutely this is the worst thing in the world and you know because they'll say well sugar is fine it's just the seed oils and you can eat as much sugar as you want type of stuff which i also disagree with i think there's there's a limit to that as well um the other question about you said something about uh, getting beef, enough of yeah. something beef is so in your opinion is it enough nutrition wise to have just beef bacon eggs sure yeah yeah, um, you know, as kind of your daily thing. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. In my opinion, my experience, you know, I mean, in my opinion is based on observing now thousands of people do just fine on that, you know, as, as far as, you know, I mean, is there, is there a potential, like some people, their folate might, might be a little low. I haven't seen that be a significant actual clinical issue. I mean, you know, like I said, there's a difference between uh, blood values and what's actually going on clinically because the blood values don't, don't always represent what's going on at the cellular or the tissue level. And so, um, so generally I, I, you know, I think you can just eat straight up beef every day and nothing else and be fine. I mean, I've seen, and I've done that for years at a time. I know people have done that for many years. And so I think in yeah. gen, for most people, I think it's generally, generally a reasonable thing to do. Um, I don't think you need to add in a lot of supplements or even organ meats. I know a lot of people think they're, they're essential. My experience has been they're not. That's the data that Harvard University, you know, shared that when they when they published their study on that. We collected data. People that ate organ meats, people that did, ate, didn't eat organ meats, they both had the same outcomes. So I'm not I'm not all I'm not pushing for people to do that. If they want to, it's fine. If they like it, go for it. If they don't like it, don't worry about it. Um, yeah. I, I think the biggest thing is don't spend your money on supplements. I think they're a huge rip off. I think they're a huge, they're overpriced or marked. If you're going to eat, if you, if you think if you need organ meats, just eat the organ meats. Don't spend money on the supplements. I'll just put it, put that out there. Um, what, what is your fate? Are you preferencing a higher fat version? Do you, do you focus on really fattier cuts or what do you, what do you, what do you, how do you pattern your diet or do you just don't even think about that or care about it? I don't try so hard to have like a specific measurement i just know the more the more fat that i do have the more full i usually feel uh which obviously you know makes sense but with you know beef i guess i'll have like 80 20 you know something like that and then i can i cook with tallow so if I, I actually like having fat in there, it just tastes better to me. So I'll add a little tallow in there and cook it with that. With eggs specifically, I cook them in the bacon grease. That's what I kind of go for. And I, yeah, I try to have a high fat diet. I just think that that for me works best. Feel full, feel like I look better. I don't need to eat as much. Um, I don't crave sugar as much when I have a higher fat mm -hmm. diet, uh, if at all. Just feel like it's it's good for the body. Yeah, no doubt we need fat, you know, and the question is what what each person needs and, and prefers. You know, I, I think that, you know, for some people, too much fat leads to some digestive issues. For some, they can't absorb it all. And some people, and it changes over time, I think. And, uh, you know, you can't go low fat on, on a carnivore diet. You'll starve. You'll be hungry all the time. So you need to have at least a moderate amount of fat and for some people even higher fat. And I think, in fact, I think maybe women perhaps – tend to generally gravitate to a slightly higher fat approach. And I think that's just because women tend to have a little bit more fat on their body than men. That's one of the differences between, between the two. And so women might, might just prefer a little bit more fat in the diet. Have you had any problems with the diet? Any negatives so far? The, uh, not necessarily. I've had some people struggle with losing weight that I've talked to. Not personally for me, I, I've lost, you know, I lost 10 pounds in my first month without really even trying and eating more than I ever had which was kind of the irony behind it. For me, I haven't really had any struggles on carnivore that I can think of um, because it's pretty affordable with the food, what you buy, all that kind of stuff. If you just eat beef, that's, you know, that would be a struggle, but that hasn't been one. I guess one question I do have, that's not really a struggle, but it's kind of gray areas. You know, how much meat per day should one eat? Like, you know, cause I'm not really counting macros on this, obviously. So maybe more like a pound I, I've heard like one gram per pound of body weight. So like if I'm 150, you know, that would be enough for a day to measure kind of relatively speaking. Does that make sense? 
Well, I mean, when you're referring to protein, you know, protein intake, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of data that would support, you know, a much higher protein amount than the RDA for sure, which is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 grams per kilogram. Most people would recommend at least 50% to double that, um, which gets close to that one pound per pound, pound of body weight. And some people use lean, lean mass. Some people go higher, particularly if you're, if you're interested in putting on muscle, you might even go a little bit higher than that. So uh, that's it. I mean, my my sort of thought is, you know, particularly when people starting out, I say eat enough so you don't want the cupcakes or the pizza or the garbage. You know, just eat enough so you're, you're full enough so you can avoid that stuff. And that works pretty well in the beginning just to get people over all those addictions. And then you can kind of play with it from there. But I think ultimately, I can't just say everybody needs to eat this amount. You have to kind of figure it out. You see what, see what you do best with and what your goals are. Like I eat a higher protein diet than, than a lot of people on this thing, but I'm always trying to compete and train hard and, and put on muscle and put on strength, you know, despite right. the fact that I'm, you know, in this geri almost geriatric age at this point, but it's, right. uh, it's still fun. Um, do you, so you are, I guess, I guess you're at home in Denver with me, is it with your family or are your, are your parents like, what the heck are you doing? Are they, what's, what's going on with that? Uh, well, it, you know, kind of my sister is actually, she's lived in another country for the last 10 or 12 years. So we've stayed in touch, obviously, been sisters, but she I haven't lived with her until right now. And we've both separately, different continents, completely landed on carnivore slash looking into that lifestyle. Um, so we're both here right now. And so parents are kind of just like rolling with it, you know, <laughs> seeing what we're doing. But I do have her as somebody else that's doing it with me and understands what's going on. And it's fascinating that we both kind of landed on this separately and she's had her own nutrition. I mean, she, that was one of the things that validated this so much for me is that she really studies this quite a lot because she's had um, some health issues herself with her stomach and things like that. She uh, actually metal toxicities has been a thing that she's discovered. So she's really into this stuff and she has landed on mainly like carnivore and then kind of implementing maybe some fruits here and there on her own. And so did I. So yeah, there is a lot of support in that way. Anybody else that's not doing it, I don't really talk to them about it because <laughs> they don't get it. They're not, they don't, they don't understand because the language for so many years has been that red meat can give you cancer, right? And all these other things, high cholesterol. And so it's kind of combating that, I don't want to say brainwashing, but language that's been around for so long mm -hmm. that it's almost a loss, lost cause until they try it themselves. So kind of getting both. Yeah. I mean, it is. Some people are so ideologically just set on what they want to do. They, it doesn't matter what you show them, what studies you show them, what results you show them, even their own health, poor health is not enough until a certain threshold, until their teeth start falling out or whatever, whatever it takes. They finally realize they're so depressed or whatever. They're unwilling to leave that. Um, and it's interesting. You, you, so you and your sister kind of converge independently. So she had come to this before you or after you, when did she discover this? At the same time, weirdly. <laughs> so that about the same time. So she was in Australia for the last three years. And I don't think it's big in Australia to do carnivore yet, not from what I hear. But we both moved back to Denver briefly for a couple months before we went to Austin. And we're both in this phase of like, wow, we recently discovered this thing. Hmm. And then we just happened to be doing it at the same time. So What's interesting about that is that she has tried so many different things that it, in my opinion, further validated carnivore because she really does investigate. And that's where all of her, her um, studies were pointing toward too. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's totally, totally randomly both came to the same conclusion. A lot of people are figuring that out. And so when you, when yeah. you, I mean, were you guys like, when she shared it with you or you shared it with her, were they like, oh my gosh, I'm doing the same thing? Was it kind of uh, surprising? Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Um, it was really weird because she, I think she was surprised by me because I had always had an eating disorder thing or whatever. And I think she was kind of like, oh my God, you're doing this too. Like that's sort of out of left field. And for me, I was surprised because she, her nutrition seemed to always to be so complex, so many different things, which is another benefit to carnivore. Honestly, it's like, it's just so simple you know, finally I was, I was surprised by her because, wow, she's suddenly doing this thing that I'm doing. And it's just actually simple. I actually know what she's talking about, <laughs> you know, and I, it's very easy to implement. So yeah, it was kind of a moment of, this is weird. How did we both land here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's interesting. I don't know. Austin is, I know Austin is, is a fairly 
in, in, in the context of Texas, Austin is one of the more progressive cities. And so more likely to adopt this, this sort of plant-based sort of thing. Are you getting any pressure? Are you seeing any of that around you with your community or people saying, oh, it's, you know, bad for the environment to eat meat and how dare you do that type of stuff? Are you, are you getting any, any pushback either that or on social media or anything like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's a lot about that and I'd be curious, you know, to hear some of, some of the input that you have on it too, but there's definitely a lot of people saying not so much in Austin really, because there's a pretty evenly split community, I would say between, let's say vegan or whatever. But when I am around those that are vegan or don't believe in carnivore, it's kind of like you're, how is that sustainable? There's not, you know, how can you possibly expect the entire world to go to that? Or plants are good for people, right? We've always had plants in our diet, this and that, or you're going to, you don't you understand the science behind red meat and cancer studies and all of those sort of pushback mm -hmm. objections that one would get has been something that I've noticed. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, I answer is, yeah, I understand the science very well. And I see the science is, is very, very poorly done. And, and, you know, there's a lot of science that doesn't suggest that. And I think if you look at the overall, you know, as we get healthier and healthier, which we undoubtedly do, I mean, the, the likelihood that that makes you more likely to get disease is just completely nonsensical. And so, I mean, that's, that's uh, do there. And I, and I, and I, and I you know, I, I've never come out and said everybody in the world needs to go on a carnivore diet. I, I, you know, like I said, I think even most people don't need to do that, but there is uh, you know, there's, there's always, a, that's a, you know, the straw man argument. Well, everybody in the world can't do it. Who's asking for that? No one is. I mean, let us, let the people that want to do that, do that. Not, you know, cause if you were forced to eat, you know, and they said, Hey, Lauren, you're not allowed to have meat anymore. You can only have it once a week. Uh, what would that do to you personally? That would make me probably spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to answer it. Like being carnivore allows you, allows me to be very straightforward in what I'm eating and know that it's good because I had that history of disordered eating. I get to apply this and it's very easy. And I just know what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to get, how much I'm going to spend. So without that, I would be figuring out where to recoup my nutrition, how to avoid all of the ingredients that you get in foods in general that aren't, that's not meat. Gosh, how much food to spend on, how much money to spend on the food that's like vegetables and all that. It's, it, it all adds up because you're not as full, at least in my experience. So it's a lot more money that I would be looking into maybe, even though that's counterintuitive to a lot of people, uh, for a lot of people, but all of those things would come into question. And then just kind of like, also, I just, the other beauty of carnivore that my sister and I were talking about is like, we never have to worry about being overweight again. You know, you just do this, you just implement it for like a few weeks, a month and you're you know, a few months and you're back to feeling strong and looking good. So it would be kind of like this uh, overall anxiety of just like, oh man, I want to look the way I want to look. How am I going to make this happen mm -hmm. the way I want to, that's easy that I was doing before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and for some people, particularly those with, uh, debilitating disease where they found a, a, a effectively a cure in, in diet, yeah. not being able to access that would, would, you know, obviously there'd be a lot of people that would suffer needlessly and, uh, not, not be too, too happy about it, nor would I, um, what, yeah. you know, as far as, uh, you know, you said you can eat as much as you want. You said you're what, five, eight, 145 pounds or something like that. How much are you eating a day? What would it, how like, are you eating like two pounds of meat a day or what would you, what would you eat? How much typically? Yeah, I am having around, I want to say about two pounds of meat a day. Breakfast is about five strips of bacon or so, maybe four, and then usually four eggs. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good with that for a six hours, seven hours sometimes. And the longer I go into carnivore, right, the less food I need really. So that's standard pretty much every day. And then I'll usually have one to one and a half pounds of beef for dinner. And that's, I just do ground beef. Mm -hmm. So for me, that works well. It's kind of why I was asking for you and your opinion about just having that, if that's enough mm -hmm. nutrient wise. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's about, it's at least one and a half pounds a day, if not two. I don't think I ever push it past that. Sometimes I implement grapes in there. For me, if I have a sweet tooth, which is not necessarily carnivore, I understand that. That's just been something I've gone in and out of. But I do notice that when I have sugar, it makes me want a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that'll ever go away. I don't know. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I mean, I think carbohydrates in general blunt our satiety effect. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a number of studies that look at that versus, you know, cholecystokinin, and GLP-1, uh, other mm -hmm. things that, that seem to blunt that. So it, it, it helps you to eat more. That's, and that's why a lot of athletes use it to, 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 to get into a caloric excess because it's easier to do on carbohydrates. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's it, it more, more or less acts as an appetite stimulant for some people, for many people, in fact. And so, yeah, so the, well, it'll probably so be there. Sorry, on that, quick question on fruit. Do you have an opinion on it? Like for athletes like yourself, do you supplement much to give you that kind of boost? I don't, I, 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 you know, like I said, I just don't, I don't, I feel I function just fine without it. And so I haven't had any reason to do that. Um, I certainly, you know, like I said, I don't begrudge anybody that wants to do that and see how, how it does for them. I just, it's, it's not for me. I can just say that. And, uh, it's, it's it, athletics or, or depending on what your sport is. I mean, you know, you could argue that, you know, humans are not designed to be, you know, giant, you know, Mr. Olympia size bodybuilder people. I mean, so maybe the physiology has to be different for that. You know, maybe, maybe we're not designed to run ultra marathons. I mean, some people like to do that. They can right. have that. I've got no desire to run for a hundred miles. <laughs> you know, I get, I get bored of that, but, but yeah, I mean, I think for certain people that it, it's certainly fine for other people, probably a lot of people, particularly people with, with insulin resistance and that, that becomes problematic. certainly after a certain degree, at least. And, and some people it's tough, like I said, it's tough to just eat one grape i mean no one wants to do that yeah. i mean you got your at least at least 10 or 20 of them or something like that and so and, and for some people it's just more and more and more it leads to these other things so you just have to know yourself and know your body and know how you respond to that stuff and if you can if you can moderate it in some cases it's fine most people many people can't you know there's these abstainers and moderators and some people need, need to abstain from that stuff and so has there been anything so surprising you found when you did the diet like you weren't expecting like wow this changed for me and i didn't really expect that i would say that my mood went up i was mainly looking at it from like a food standpoint because mm -hmm. i had such a history of disordered it's a lot of work to have a disordered eating pattern honestly it's a lot of brain power so i was kind of like man let's try this thing because my friend had tried it um what i was what I was happy with was that I lost 10 pounds. I wasn't necessarily so surprised by that because I knew it was not very many, no carbs. That's kind of helped out with that way. But the mood thing, I was like waking up. Um, my mood was just really positive. Clarity in my um, just thoughts in a lot of ways. So like, uh, I don't know if the right word is focus, but just kind of clarity. Similar to when I stopped drinking alcohol, like a few months after that, there was a lot of clarity that came. And it was similar to that, probably weaning off those foods that were affecting me, in my gut. So that was nice. The waking up early without anything was crazy. Just like, so you, so you kind of just wake up and you're in a good mood. You're already pretty uplifted and bright because your energy is up. And all around, that was surprising. That whole experience there was really strange because you would think you would need more sugar or something to get you there. And you just didn't, you just, I wouldn't, I didn't need that. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. A lot of people, because a lot of people talk about, well, you could lose weight anyway, just get in a caloric deficit. And, and that, you know, generally is, is largely true. But the other thing is all these other additional things that seem to happen, the cognitive benefits, the skin, the, all, all the things that we see that are there. How about digestively? Did you notice any changes in your digestive system? Because a lot of people, I mean, you, you know, again, I see a lot of girls or sorry, young women on social media talking about how bloated they are and how normal that is. And was that something you'd struggled with? And did you notice a difference with that? Okay. So I'm glad you brought that up because it brings up a whole other thing that I was forgetting. Yeah. So, um, gut issues. So I had all, like I would eat one little grape or a nut or whatever, and it'd be first thing in the morning, you're not bloated and then give it 10 minutes. And it's, you're, you, I look like I was like six months pregnant. <laughs> And that was from a history, I think, of having disordered eating, but also just my microbiome was really off and I knew it. So anything I was eating was just causing inflammation. It was just inflamed all the time, but it would cause me to bloat. And so when I started eating carnivore, I was shocked, truly. That was one of the best things at how there was, there was no bloating at all, ever. So I was eating as much as I wanted more. I was being, in your words, comfortably stuffed, right? And having as much as I wanted 
losing weight, not having any bloating whatsoever. And I noticed that over the talking about health specifically, not just food patterns that improve, but like health, my gut dramatically improved dramatically. So everything, my uh, bowel movements, I had struggled. Like sometimes I would think I would go a week and just have one, which was a very common thing for me. I was like, that's clearly not right. And so once I got into this pattern of eating carnivore, I was having regular bowel movements that were just like consistent and wasn't bloated. And I, you can feel when your gut is healthy. I don't know how to explain it really, but there's just a feeling of like your, of like homeostasis, I don't know, homeostasis or something like that, that all around your body is functioning right. So that was a massive improvement. Yeah, I know for me, when I went from a ketogenic diet, which had lots of, you know, leafy greens and salads and all this stuff, you know, years of seven, eight years ago, um, to carnivore, it, it was just, it was almost like an absence of noticing digestion. I didn't notice I was digesting anything anymore. It was just, it was so, yeah. it was just so like, you know, and, and even, you know, today I can sit down and eat two, three pounds of meat. And literally I'm like, I don't even feel like I've got anything in my stomach at all. It's, it's so comfortable yeah. and I can go exercise pretty much almost immediately afterwards. So that is wow. a, that is a real, real, real benefit. Um, you had mentioned, uh, you know, electrolytes in the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. is that something you still supplement? Do you worry about salt or how do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah. As far as electrolytes, I was getting magnesium, potassium, and salt, um, in the beginning for all of those, that transition phase, I noticed that was necessary for my trail running that I was talking to you about. And also just cramping, um, as I've gone into it further, I haven't needed uh, the electrolytes as much. It, when I did implement fruit, that was something that I have heard through other doctors and here and there that that could help supplement for electrolytes. The longer I stay in carnivore, no, I don't really supplement with them. But as I transition into it, if I go back from animal base, I do tend to supplement with electrolytes. You know, I'd be curious as to your like, do you still supplements supplement yourself with those, or you know? Is that something that you need to? Well, I mean, I, I do. And, and it's because I'm always exercising hard and sweating a lot. And, you know, I think you just, you tend to lose that. So I, I do that. But, you know, like I said, I think once you go carnivore, you know, particularly if you're coming from a standard American diet where you get just an enormous amount of sodium in all the processed food, you eliminate that, eliminate that. And then all of a sudden you're on a relatively low sodium diet. So by adding a little bit back in, a lot of people feel better. Not everybody. There's some people do carnivore without any salt at all, which which is something I I, I don't know that I would enjoy that. Um, <laughs> but, but so well, some people do. Some people and they they like it. And you know, there's other people that do different ways. And I'm not going to say one way is perfect and one way is not. I think you find your own thing. But yeah, I mean, I think you know, particularly again when we talk about doing athletics. Again, do we do humans need to do athletics? Probably not. I mean, I, I mean, there's a there's a balance between being totally sedentary, which most of society has become versus, you know, becoming an extreme sort of athlete. And there's probably, you need to get some level of regular activity and how much is too much. Hard to say. I mean, I, I'm, like I said, I'm wired that way. I like competing. That's, that's who I am. That's who I'll always be. So I, I find that that help, that's helpful to me. Are you concerned about heart disease? Cause this is, this is always a thing that people will come up, you know, and say, Hey, um, it sounds great. I'm worried about heart disease. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. So I have an interesting take on that, um, actually as of recent. So my mom passed away about a month ago. Um, and she, her, her, she had heart disease in her family. Um, so that was a major contributing factor to her passing. And my grandpa had that as well. So it's something that absolutely is top of mind, um, for one side of my family that I pay attention to. It's actually one of the reasons why I'm interested in this is because I feel based off the research that I've done and looking into all of this, that it actually is a, it helps with heart disease. And that's another reason why I also decided to stop drinking in part was just for my health in general. So yeah, it's very much a thing that I pay attention to. Um, and I'm always curious to see, you know, the more information that comes out about this because I don't see that the system that we have today is effective whatsoever. And that's one of the reasons that I became a carnivore coach. I think it, so much of heart disease comes down to the food that we eat um, and what our lifestyle looks like combined with that. So 
that's sort of where I'm going with it. I see carnivore as a, a very effective mechanism to prevent heart disease and or to turn something around. Yeah. Yeah. I don't disagree. I think, I think that, uh, when we look at the risk factors for cardiovascular disease, they're far, far more than just what your LDL cholesterol is or your APOB, you know, uh, uh, amount is. And so, uh, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, you know, chronic inflammation, uh, all those things, which almost always get better on carnivore, which is interesting to see. And, and all these risk factors improve and whether or not your LDL goes up or not, you know, may or may not increase your risk. It's still debatable. There's some studies out there looking at that, but I think um, certainly you're improving quality of life. And I think that's an important, very important aspect of, of uh, what we need to do because we got so many people that are suffering from that. You know, I don't even know what you do for a living or anything like that, but what are your plans uh, over the next, do you have plans on doing anything over the next few years or what are your goals? I am trying to help as many people as I can with their food, with their, through, through learning about this myself. So this is a massive focus of mine is learning as much as I can about carnivore and then helping to educate others through my experience is really important to me because I think that so many people are, well, I know how I was living for so many years. And I think so much of it came down from what I was eating or not eating. So many people have anxiety, struggles, depression, they're overweight, you know, whatever it is. So figuring this out, to help myself and then help other people is a main, main goal of mine. Um, I'm currently working, I'm doing, I recently moved to the corporate life <laughs> in terms of a job just to experience it. So uh, director of sales at Indeed um, and been working there for a little while. It's been nice, it's a great company. Uh, just kind of seeing what that looks like, but taking that information as well uh, to kind of catapult myself into another direction after a few years to further help people with that knowledge as well is something that I want to pull from this, um, moving forward. Very good. Nice. Um, well, we are coming to a close on the time we have allotted to us. So let me ask you, I mean, do you have a, a your coaching? So where, where do people go to find you if they're interested in chatting more, learning more about you or getting, uh, some help from you? Where do they go? Yeah. Uh, they can likely just find me on YouTube. My name is Lauren Knight Hughes. It's a long name, mm -hmm. Lauren Knight Hughes. K N I G H T Hughes H U G H E S. Instagram is L Knight underscore H. It's kind of where I just talk to people personally and help them out a little bit more one on one. Um, and yeah, I always can email me there as well. You can see my email on my YouTube channel. But um, super, always learning and curious about all of this stuff, and just really excited about the opportunities that it's brought me and other people going forward. It's exciting. Well, awesome. Thank you for being willing to share your story and, and, you know, and, and being open enough to try this. Like, you know, a lot of people, cause I think a lot of people, particularly in your sort of demographic, you know, younger women are, are sort of sucked into this plant-based narrative. You know, they, they've got a they message, you know, that try to take advantage of people's compassionate side and show them a picture of a cute pig and say, Oh my God, we're, how can you dare? And, you know, you're an animal abuser and all this nonsense. So good for, good for you for resisting that. <laughs> a lot of people don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's definitely something I think that we all have to get there on our own journey. Right. And I think for so many young, for women, you're, you're taught to your point that salads are good and vegetables and like, you know, just have the keto snacks and those things. And the reality is whole food is good. Eat until you're full, have a lot of protein, have a lot of fat. That's not going to make you fat, yeah. you know, make sure that you're limiting the amount of just the processed foods. And, um, also it's okay to be mus muscular. I think a lot of girls are still shifting into that and it's, you just want to be happy at the end of the day and you're going to feel better. Yeah. If you're you. employed. Yeah, yeah, good, good for you. I th and I think women should be do strength training and put some strength oh. on them. Perfect. Okay, guys, thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, we'll see everybody back tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye now. Thanks, Sean. Bye bye. Hey, folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free. 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful and we'd love to see your success.